Oh my god, Jim. Yeah, that's that's exactly why I, th I thought that. All right, cool. Thanks everyone, uh, especially for showing up somewhat on time. So this is great. Uh, might be some few new faces. I'll just give you a quick 30 seconds uh, <laughs> uh, little, uh, introduction. Uh, I'm Jim Ross, Free Mile Storage Management. Uh, been in the industry for many, many years. Like doing this kind of stuff with uh, when it comes to education and rather than having anything prepared or any kind of a presentation, we just let it roll. So any kind of questions you have, comments, it's not just us, it's, it's everybody. So we're all in this together. So go ahead, Jim. Say hi. I'm Jim Mooney Jr. Same thing. Jim and Jim Ross. You know, Jim, our paths are pretty parallel in this industry. Really, yeah. they are. I think between us, we got over 50 years. I don't say that. It makes us sound old. But uh, owner, operator, uh, I do a lot of consulting, speaking nationally. I just got back from the Nessa show up in, uh, in uh, Massachusetts. Really, really good conference. Always like meeting and networking and, and chatting with people. And this this is just fun for us. We can just tell it like it is. And one of the comments was made because David and I did a session in New England, and somebody said, "Wow, you'll never know what those two are going to say." It's absolutely right. You never know what we're going to say. No, yeah, it's it, don't have any like any allegiance or biases or anything like that. It's, it is what it is. It's just kind of, that's why we, that's why we did this together. It's kind of fun that way. Yeah. Um, as we're just kind of rolling, guys. Any questions you have? Raise your hand, put it in the comments or in the chat. We're bringing you on. So if you have anything specific, please let, let me know. That'd be great. Well, I'd love to know from everybody how uh, how May starting out because April April is okay. We're we were still down. I mean, in my work in my stores, we were down about 222 inquiries over 23. And it was scattered across all stores. So, you know, we and part of the message we've been talking about, and especially consulting lately. You, every every time that phone rings, every time that inbox dings, front door opens, however you're getting them, you have to be on them and call them back. And I actually sat at a table uh, with Jess Johnson from SBOA, and um, she said that, you know, with her doing the mystery shopping, working with Dan Cosgrove's group, um, they're constantly mystery shopping people. And Jim, you and I do it all the time. So I'll ask you, Jim, well, the last time you mystery shopped somebody, did they actually get your name and number? Oh, no, and anytime I'm a glutton for punishment, I feel like wanting to feel bad about myself or whatever. I, I call mystery shops and I realize most of them are terrible. Yeah, <laughs> they just are. Uh, yeah, I just did a, a consultation. So that's a good like some consultations this week. And he was asking about exactly that. Like, oh, rentals are kind of down. I'm like, well, how's your conversions? I don't know. And so I secret shopped him the next day. Didn't tell him I was, but I was secret shopped him. And you know, don't there's no conversation there's no rapport there's no of course asking your name or, or number or email to follow up that's that's non-existent yeah and that's well, one of the things I, when, oh, go ahead my god well i was gonna say that that's one of the things when I, I told him like if your manager's not doing it you're not willing to train that it's time to bring like a call center in. that's that's what these guys do they get the reps that's that's their job is to actually have a good clean professionally efficient uh presentation sales presentation i mean it's one of those things where it's not like we're cold calling people going hey you want a storage today and we're not doing that they're already calling us they're already halfway done with the sale just don't screw it up and it doesn't take much to really <laughs> to stand out and get those those extra rounds and get those uh conversions i made a comment to a a, a, a guy the other day that um because we, you know, we we use Mister Shopping, and I said in my last in my last world, um, and it's still even in my world today, if we mystery shop your facility, whether it's a phone call, a walk, or a walk in, and it's not logged into SiteLink or PMS, it's an automatic zero. Yeah, no matter it. how well you did, yeah. it's an automatic zero. And same thing, if you don't call back the very next morning with the thank you call, what we call the thank you call. You lose like 50% of your score. What do you mean a thank you call? Thank you as far as they rented or thank you as for calling? Do you for the inquiry. So in, in my, I think we've had this conversation before, but in my, in, in my world, in my opinion, um, the thank you call or the phone call the very next morning is equally to, if not more important than the first phone call. 
because think about it, Jim, if if you're if you're like all the shoppers, you're you're scribbling down all this information on a piece of paper. You call three or four people, if if that, because I'm only call one or two. The next morning, I call you back, and you're looking at the note. You're like, okay, who said what? And I call you back, say, hey, Tricia, thanks for walking in my front door yesterday. Thanks for calling me. Thanks for going online. I know we talked about your needs for a ten by ten storage unit because your kids are moving back home from college. Go through the whole list. When can when can you come see me or when can we take care of your unit? To me, that's equally to, if not more important than the first phone call. Yeah, no, that's great. That's that's uh yeah, I know where you guys were just blabbing here. So if you have anything, <laughs> anything to say or comment, please put it in there. Uh but no, this kind of brings me up to a I did a presentation for the California Self Storage Association uh this week. First time right. ever. It's kind of weird. So hold on. Lisa asked what's behind me. So it's I'm gonna move. I asked the same thing. That is a phrase that's driving me freaking crazy lately when I hear people say, but that's the way we've always done it. So I'm kind of on that kick right now that guys, change, actually, we talked yesterday in, in New England that change is inevitable. And I say it all the time when I speak that even when, you know, my kids, when they were little and went to school, if they had a substitute teacher their day was shot. Change is inevitable. Embrace change. Everybody's afraid of it. And actually, you know, um, in our slide, Jim, we had, you know, what does fear mean to you? You know, and there's, there's, def there's different animations for fear. Um, and the one we were talking about yesterday in our, in our presentation says, let me pull it up so I can make sure I read it exactly right. Come on, open up. Let's kind of fear. I said what I was going to bring up too. So yeah, but go ahead. Fear could mean forget everything and run. Or face everything and rise. I choose the latter. Well, it's and, and then it's like, you know, there's some quotes. Um, you know, it, John Wooden had a quote that we had on our slide. Don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. Mm -hmm. Put that on a bumper sticker. So we're, we're, we're full of quotes this week. Absolutely. Uh, I, let me show you with this real quick because it kind of dovetails nicely in my whole theme I was talking about during my presentation this week. Uh, here, quick. This. I, I was doing a presentation for the California Self Storage Association, and and it was basically a one year blueprint to success. And great, I, I'm all I'm all for that, having a plan and putting everything together. Um, yeah, please bring these people in here. I, I like that. I really and, like that. Yeah, and so I was just like, just make it easy. Because, it, it, again, sometimes we're talking about these big granular ideas and things like that. I'm like, I have to screw that. Let's just look at one specific thing. I don't care if it's a phone call or if it's a follow-up or if it's your office or just the first sentence of how you're answering the phone, whatever. Just look at it and just be like, how can I improve you know just by by one percent just make yeah. it a little because you you know it's sometimes it's the little things that add up that's what makes a difference <laughs> in a lot of these situations yeah. and so that was kind of the common thing and that, that came right. to foundations and marketing and sales and service and revenue management just mm -hmm. look at it through that lens of just one percent improvement right. and you'd be amazed you know you kind of ask yourself that question we all know the answers i think i, I really do i think we're a lot of it's common sense it matter it's just a matter of taking action <laughs> and actually doing it right well let me share one of the slides we did yesterday i'll show you one thing that jumped out and really kind of um think about this um oh, i'm on the wrong page here hold on let me see your share screen two can you guys see this screen yep think about this now, and this is this is not a this is not a specifically storage uh, stat, but look at this. You know, 40 percent of people never make a follow up on a sales call, which is phenomenal. But most people make one or two calls and stuff. But the line that gets me is eighty percent of the sales calls are made on the fifth to the twelfth contact. So in our world, one of the questions I get a lot from people is how often how often should I call somebody for a, a follow up call? And my answer has always been 
it depends on when they need it for. Because you got somebody pulling in it uh, today, needs it today, it's going to be quicker. But if you got somebody who's building a house or something like that, we got you got people who are planners that plan things. It's going to take a little bit. Yeah, and it, I, 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 again, I'm always more about trying to put a framework framework around it because I figure if otherwise <laughs> people won't do any kind of follow ups if I don't have some sort of direction. My my guiding rule has always been three times. I mean, yeah, three is kind of my yeah. uh, that's my common theme pretty much everything I do. Yeah. But I, that's always what it's kind of been is just that that three time uh, yeah. follow up, and maybe my, you maybe can spread that out depending on when they need it. You can exactly. In so. my world, in Sightlink, in, we have it set up that you cannot, a lead in Sightlink will not, it has to either be rented or canceled. It won't, it won't uh, expire. We turn our expire date out so long that we're going to follow. So we have to either rent it or cancel it to get, kind of get some traction on there. But again, everyone's different. Every store is different. Every, every instance is a little different. But the big thing on there was 48% of people never follow up. So Think about yourself when you people are coming in your stores. And I asked, I actually, I did a, like I said, I was consulting last week and I looked at the, the tenant demand track, the unit demand tracking report and site link for the owner. And I said, okay, here's your problem. You got walk ins, you got no phone calls being logged in, and your website's not doing anything for you. So when we started talking, this, I randomly called six of our stores. Nobody took my name, nobody took my number. And when we got together, I said, why didn't you get, grab my name or number? Uh, and it was a laundry list of reasons why, yeah. but I'm like, guys, you know, that lead is worth. And I said, you know what your average length to say is, oh, uh, 12, 13, 14 months. And we looked one store, you know, one store is 10 by 10 is $125. I said, do the math. Even if it's 10 months, that's $1,200 in value. You let walk out the door because you didn't grab a name or a phone number. Yeah. That's in fact, that's one of my last, last slide. Then we'll, we'll go, we'll move on here. Uh, where to go? Too many things opened up. Dun, 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 dun. That, was, that was one of my first slides. Calculate lifetime customer value. Because <laughs> really, once you know that, it, it makes a lot of decisions a lot easier. And it helps to hammer home the importance of A, marketing, yeah. B, or ROI on what, what marketing you're actually doing. So you're not just doing the shotgun yeah. approach and crossing your fingers that it works. Dude, you need to send me that slide. That's awesome. Yeah, I, it's it's so funny. I I did this whole presentation. I had you know, all these different. I mean, it just sorry, real quick. Just went on and on. E each slide had a little different. Uh, uh, uh dude, that's AI awesome. version, you know. And so I did, I did this that whole. Gorgeous, Jim. I did this right, whole. You make, you make my presentations look like kindergarten drawings. Thank you, sir. I'm very the only big. thing that could have made that better, Jim, is if you had it be Scrooge McDuck, like literally. <laughs> we'll work on that. But anyway, I, I was doing this whole thing. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And I was waiting for questions at the end. The only question I got was, how do you make those images? So <laughs> that was it. Uh, but it, it, it's fun. I like this. Well, question. how did you make the images? Uh, everything I do is in ChatGPT. There you go. So ChatGPT, Dolly. Uh, I just kind of give it very generic instructions i think i just said create me a humorous and funny uh slide and i would just give a very basic you know lifetime value of a customer for self-storage yeah. and then i go i didn't give any more specific than that because chat gpt is a hell of a lot more creative than i am yeah so I just gotta leverage that and it gives me ideas and that's I, i'm gonna start doing that just this is a whole sidetrack but i think i'm gonna start doing like i don't know 15 minute segments maybe every other day of just being like hey Learn AI with me. I'm just going to go on and play, mm -hmm. do a tool. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Jim, Jim, you you, you and I should put something together yeah. for Vegas. What's that? You and I should put together a presentation for Vegas. It'd be fun. It'd be fun. I, it, it's, again, I can go on the whole tangent when it comes to the AI stuff. Even if you're not literate in it, you just need to know me, what's going to happen. Me, I it's, use it. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's coming quick. In fact, this week there was supposed to be a whole new ChatGPT search engine coming out, and who knows how that's going to affect Google and GMB and Apple Maps. It's, it's, it'll be interesting, so I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on that one. So uh, I, I have a really good question for for everybody in the room, and this is something that was really fun to me. Um, 
We do have we a couple of the importance of you know, our Google rankings. We all know importance of everything like that, right? When was the last time anybody here did an incognito search on both Google and Bing for your own store? I just put self storage Johnson City, Tennessee, or self storage Bismarck, North Dakota, or Max self storage, you know, by your area. When was the last time you did that? And here's the reason I'm going to bring it up and ask you guys. And, and I really, for educational purposes, I was, again, consulting the other week, and we were in Georgia, and we're doing this. And, oh, no, my source rank really, really well. So because if you're searching from your home computer all the time and the computer knows where you're at, it's going to find you quicker. We did an incognito search in Georgia for a store that the manager thought ranked second. It ranked 14th. Oh, I, I believe it. In fact, I'm going to put... AKA last, right, Jim? If you ain't first, you're last. It, to kind of go along with that... Pretty much. This, it's, it's on my website, but it's, it's just a tool that I put out there for, for people. And I just started using it myself the last couple of weeks. If you want, I just put it in chat. Because I, I did this for my presentation as well. Kind of goes with what you're just talking about. If you want a report card, basically, of where you're showing up <laughs> when it comes to Google Maps, your uh, competition online for uh, Could you put the storage near me, it's a great yeah. report card just to know kind of where you stand. So, and it's free. So I just put it in there, put your information in, and you'll get a, you'll get a little report card back in like five minutes. It's yeah. It's pretty cool. The other thing we were talked about is how many of us ha have maximized our GBP page by having categories, by having units, by having descriptions and pictures. It's really important because I was talking to Steve Lucas from Storage Group yesterday, and he told me more and more people are shopping on Google Business Profile pages rather than on the websites. So I go, my Google BP, GBP page you can actually see my units, and I have a, a button that says on, book, uh, book Now, and it'll take you right to the website. So you're already on your page doing your some of your shopping, and hit, click Book Now, it'll take you right to the website. So by making sure your GBP page is maximized with all of it. Yeah, um, I, I, I try to frame it as whatever you have on your website, you, you mirror that on your GMB page because you can do pretty much everything because the whole thing, Google doesn't want you to leave, frankly. They want you to stay as much as possible. So they they put a lot on there that you just got to fill in the information. Uh, again, I do whole presentations on that too. I love I love GMB stuff. But you just kind of look at mirroring your website and put that on your on a GMB page. Because right. another, another stat is, I'll get it wrong, but it's like 58% of your website traffic for local businesses originates from your GMB page. It's your GMB page and then they click website and then it goes to your website. Yeah, just That's for you guys, cool. to, oh, oh, I'm, talking, I'm gonna show you here real quick. On here, I'm on my page, right? I can see my page here, all the reviews, right? Come down here, I got products. Got all my products on here, the sizes, climate controlled, right? You got categories. I mean, you can have all this stuff right in here. Here, and then it goes right to order online. And it's going to take me right to my website page. To your rental page. Yeah. There you go. So we're working on those. But the, uh, those are things that, again, for everybody out there, that's free. You don't have to pay anybody. You don't have to pay SEO. You don't have to pay pay-per-click, any of that stuff. This is all stuff you can update yourself and make, be right there. So it's really cool. And one thing that somebody else brought up yesterday, I think it was Jess Johnson and yesterday, um, when was the last time anybody went through and, you know, used, clicked on some of the links on your website, make sure they work right. Make sure the phone numbers work right. And call from the, you know, if you got tracking numbers on your website, making sure you're track, calling that tracking number to make sure it's pointing where it's supposed to point to and didn't get disconnected or all of a sudden you got five or six rings. I know Shannon, I'm 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 talking to your stuff right now because girl, I know you love calls and call centers. This is important stuff. I mean, yes. I do it all the time, even for my call center. I call my store and I make sure that the ring count to get to the call center is accurate 
because you set it up for two or three rings, and then something happens in at t or Verizon or whatever, and next thing you know, you got nine rings. Nobody's going to hang out for nine rings. So make sure you're testing yourself. We do ours monthly. Test the ring cycles. I, I These are all I, things we can do you know, internally to make sure you're doing your stores are maximized for what you want to do. I got an idea that I want to see if we can get to after, after we get to a couple of these questions. I don't want to ignore these and we'll. Yeah. Back. Uh, who we got here? Um, Shannon. Jim. Yeah. So I had this and then you're going to think I'm crazy, but this is a genuine question. I would have thought yesterday I knew the answer to this, but because I have had a client send me a note this morning asking me a question and I'm like, they are a really smart person. So I feel like if they're asking me, I better check to make sure my understanding is correct. But specifically with regards to the, uh, my business profile, your Google, my business page that you were just looking at is any portion of that like forward facing, or is that really just for you behind the scenes where you're guiding what people are going to see on your website or feeding information into Google or do people just on the random web who search for your self storage and have you come up? Is there a way that they'll click on that and actually be on that Google My Business page? Yeah, there I is. Just did it. That, that that that's pretty much what it looks like. Well, I thought you had like a whole separate link that you were using. That would be what would come up in a search. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I it's, literally did not know that. Okay, mind expanding. Did you see a new neural pathway just got created right there? I really saw a little smoke coming back here. Yeah. I really so here, that here, was behind Shannon, the scenes. Here, Shannon, we're going to do it, right? I'm going to go to Google. Okay. Right? And I'm going to type in quick store self-storage. Here it is. Pops it up. Okay. Here's my profile page right here. Okay, no, I, well, I see that, but okay, so when you say website, though, you're going to... Well, once it goes in here, you can, once I'm in, in here, I go into the categories. Uh-huh. Then you click, it gets to the link. See, it says order online right here. That's uh -huh. the button you need to enable on your GBP page. Okay, so question for you, would there be a value, if you go back one for me, would there be a value to you, like let's say that your website actually has live chat on it for that site, can that be loaded here as well? You can that I don't know the well, answer to. Jim, do you? I'll show you. Go go to the top. Uh, show, show your screen again. Oh, Jim. Yeah. And I'm so sorry. I just hijacked the whole thing because okay. my mind just exploded. I'm right the here. Whole this is for click on messages. Do you see on the very left, third one over in the blue? Go to the left. Oh, here. Click messages. That's that's your chat within GMB. Yeah. It, it's, you it's, can you can message through you can message message your chat because we get messages all the time. Okay. Okay. That helped, that helped me so, so much because now I actually understand the question that I got. I haven't responded back to them because I'm like, yeah. that question doesn't even make sense to me. Um, and I was literally going to have to go do research. But when you were talking about that, I'm like, I'm going to call Jim and Jim my research today. That's what just happened right now. Yeah. Where'd you learn about that from Jim and Jim? That's what I'm going to say. There you go. Thank yeah. you so much. The, the GMB yeah. stuff. I mean, gosh, we, honestly, we could do this every single week just on GMB because it's so valuable. And I've done probably 300, if I had to put a number on it, of uh, optimization sessions. I would do like free. It got to the point where I almost had, I didn't have time because it's like, I still don't yeah. make, I still don't make about doing my management stuff. But it was a great way to start talking with people. And I would do these 30 minute sessions for GMB. Make and sure you get good phone numbers, your good, your review, everything's there. Um, yeah. And it goes back to messages. Make sure that. You know, because people are in, in my world, the managers don't have access to the GBP page. So we got to make sure that, that we have three or four people who are on all the time. We get to message on our phone or computer that we're responding to the message. We're having more people messages through GM, GB, GMP pages than we had in the past. So we got to make sure you're, if you get a message, you respond to it. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure we got a couple of questions here. We'll go back to, we'll, yep. we'll, we'll revisit. Uh, Jimish. So we gotta have a we gotta have you on. Got a Jim, Jim, and Jimish. That's awesome. Um, for acquiring a facility, how often should I have my VAs call? Every week, every two weeks. 
I don't know, that's not that's not my uh, expertise when it comes to acquiring facilities. I'm I'm the hard gun that manages them once you actually get it. Same thing here, but I would say, wow, that's I would I would talk to I would any brokers popping up on here or anybody who's been buying stores looking, um, because I I don't know the answer to that one. Yeah, if anyone else on here has a good uh, two cents, yeah, jump on. What I've heard uh, just from uh, other calls is uh, if you have your VA ask, uh, when would be a good time to give you a call back? And if the owner says, call me back in about six months, cut it in half and call in three months. So leave it open-ended to the owner because the owner may not want to call every week. Um, so try and ask an open-ended question and get, have them give you some feedback. And then things may change between now and six months. So if you call back in three months, um, it, it's not every week, but the owner gives you some guidance on, on callback. Yeah. Perfect. Ryan. Thank you. I'm, I'm amazed how many people that, you know, are looking for, uh, looking for deals. And we know it's harder than it used to be because now everyone's looking for a deal, but man, some of these guys, it's a freaking machine. They got like 20, 30 people, VAs, and that's all they do full time is just beating the bushes and trying to get the lead. It's yeah. That's crazy. Oh, well, you got to be the like right Mary guy. Joe's right getting time. beat up from the VAs calling all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you, I'm getting I'm getting calls and emails from people all the time wanting to buy our stuff. So, um, but uh, Ryan, you made a really, really, really good point. And everything in storage, asking open ended questions, critical, very important. Thank you for that. What else we got here? We check our phone numbers daily. Cool. Um. I want to do something for five, 10 minutes, if you don't mind. And I, I got this guy's approval. <laughs> okay. Uh, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. Call me a few days ago and I'm going to pull up. Let me share my screen. We're going to do a group, a group consult. I want everyone to kind of look at this. He hasn't touched it in about five years. The synopsis is basically, I'm not getting as many calls as I used to and not as many rentals. And I see some low hanging fruit that he can obviously start putting together, but jump in. <laughs> you don't have to worry about chat, just, just jump in. Just kind of tell me what you see or anything. You'd be like, this needs to be updated or something to get the phone to ring and actually get rentals right. online, okay? So what jumps out at you first, Jim? Anything? Thing jumps out at me. You, you, you have to you have to click to see any prices. There's no prices. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's the big thing. I would under the fold here. I mean, I love the, the picture sliding across the top. I mean, we do videos, but I would have some. I mean, right now it says unit sizes, call for a free quote. But he's got really the his call to action, call today, call today for a free quote is so you can barely read it. It's it's kind of hidden in all the back text. And there's no prices. There's no units available. There's no rent now. You know, there's rent now. That's the word I was looking for. Rent now. Yeah, there's no actions. And if I was, I'd I hate the fact that he's got paying 24 hour security with an old ass Digigate keypad. <laughs> I just you know, to be fair, that. Jim, not every tenant in the world is going to know that that is an old Digigate keypad and treat that with the same derision that you just did. But oh. you're not wrong. <laughs> Well, exactly. if I'm thinking I'm thinking security, I'm thinking cameras, not a, and people might not even know what that's a keypad. So all I see is a, a box in a tree. So unless he's got somebody in a tree with binoculars watching the property, I don't know. Yeah, we're just gonna scroll down. And if, honestly, I should be doing this for my phone and sharing my phone screen, but yeah. whatever. Um, because okay. no one no one looks at that desktop right. anymore. Jumps out right there, you know, Jim. That's in 2019. That's five years ago. All that white space on that first screen just makes it look so bland. And if they just put some color, scroll back up. If they just put almost any color around all that white space, um, reserve now, rent now, it's, it's pretty close to the same thing for me, but I'm not as in tune with, with the latest and the greatest as, as you guys are. Um, I'm, I'm not even looking at really how pretty it is. I'm just looking at functionality and actually that kind oh, of stuff too. It's so, so yeah. bland. It's not even funny. 
I clicked reserve. Okay. Da, 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 da. So he can't run online right now. He's just going to lose half his customers. Thank you very much. And and then honestly, I'm doing this too because I'm going to show this recording because this is peer pressure to make him actually do what we're trying to tell him to do because he's done this for years. Kind of like going back to what you just talked about. You're because it's the way we've always done it. The thing behind you. Is he 100 percent occupied? No, it. He's well, in, the, in the nosedive. That's here's the other question. You know, he says in the one slide, he's got so many so many climate controlled units and so many non-climate. A five by five doesn't give you a price, doesn't tell you whether it's climate or non-climate. So now you, you, you so okay, reserve my unit. There's nothing there. How There's do you know nothing to, you can't click on it. It doesn't have a is it a clickable thing on reserve? No. It doesn't. No. And where's his price? You have to call. And which one is it? Is it climate or non-climate? Oh my gosh, it's making me crazy, Jim. You got to take it away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, <laughs> this is for his minute. benefit because I want to show him that's not just me. It's everyone going, what the hell are you doing? You get this yeah. I mean, or the good news is these are easy. Storage up in the tiny little corner. Yeah. yeah. This is this is peer pressure at its best. So this is what we're doing here. Yeah. And well, there's all that white space again, Steve. Like yep. use that space to talk about what is, put a picture, a size, something. I don't know. Also, where where is it? I've never seen an address, a street, a city, a state. So I see the phone and the phone number. So maybe in the upper left elite storage, you leave the phone number and the address of the property. I, I well, haven't three seen. Three or three is Colorado, right? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Got to go to the bottom. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, at the bottom. bottom. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's enough to be able to kick him in the butt to do some of this easy stuff. So thank you. Thank you for playing along. Well, Jim, one, one of these things we've been talking about, and actually I just saw Ross from Calculate this week and there, and I'm going to share my screen just so people can see it. One of the things we've added to our website, which is tremendously helpful, right? So here we got our size and all. We actually added to our website this build my space unit button because how many people don't know what size they want, right? You can go in here. I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to reset it. I'm just going to leave it here, but I can go in here and put on what I'm trying to put in here, right? What I'm trying to store, whatever. And this has been a, such a helpful tool for my managers that when we figure out what they have, we hit the calculate button. It'll actually help them show them how to stack the unit right, and I'll tell them what size they want best. So when we got new people online, you know, <laughs> it's going to tell me where we're at. But when we and we got managers on, the, on our phone right now, when people are calling and asking the question, "Have you ever used storage before?" No, we start talking about what they're storing. If hey, are you on our website? We can walk them right through the process here. There's also presets. You can go in. Okay, I got a three bedroom house going into storage. You know, and kind of you know see what you got here, calculate it. That's it awesome. Kind of <laughs> gives them. That is so cool. Kind of gives them. Okay, here you go. It's what you want. You want a little bit of space, you can go a little bit bigger, give some options. But it's one of those things that we can, we can, again, remember, guys, most of us still say 50% of people have never used storage before. And I love the fact when they, they call, hey, I need the biggest thing you got or the smallest thing you got, and they pull up in the truck. But by having our managers, when we're on the phone, use this technology, say, hey, or even the manager does it for them, say, start asking the questions, what are you storing? Start building the unit. Well, hey, per this tool we have, and we're actually, you know, me, Jim, I'm always pushing these vendors to do more. Ross is actually working on a thing where we can actually email you the link in the video, how to stack and all those things. But it's a tool on our website that sets us apart. It helps people figure out what size they want. We all have sizing charts. I mean, if you, if I'm on my website, I think I still have a size guide, right? That's a, that's a calculate, wasn't it? That was Calcumate. This is a size guide. This is a generic one. But I like the Calcumate because it gives me better solutions for helping the people out. Hey, Jim, uh, some of the older facilities may have um, obscure sizes, not a 5x5 five five or a 5x10. Five it might be 5x8 or 10x18. Right. Is that adjustable, that program? Absolutely. It, it integrates with your PMS software and your website. So it, it'll tell you what sizes you have. So it'll work okay. with what size you got. And anybody who wants an introduction, just you know, drop it in and let me know. And I will make sure that I connect you guys with Ross because he's a, 
actually he's, a, he's an Australian dude and they started down there, but he's in the States right now traveling all over the country, but he's, uh, he's, uh, trying to make this thing as, as best as it can be. So, yeah. I saw that like four years ago and I loved it then, but this is, that was amazing. That was amazing. I already just sent it to two other people on my team because there's no reason us in a call center should not have that capability. Actually, well. Shannon, we had that conversation with Ross yesterday about working with the call centers, that his tool should be on your call center software. I 100%. Yeah. I mean, we have a storage calculator for them, but it's nowhere near as good as that. So, so if you want, Shannon, I'll do an intro. After this, I'll send an email to Ross and copy you, kind of do that intro for you. If you wouldn't mind, and actually, I I will send you another person's name because we are we have a product person. Yeah. So you send it to me, and then I will reply to that one and copy Ross. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much. But again, guys, tools like this that are out there that can help us make our lives better, especially when we're running these remote properties, and you, you somebody pulls up and rents a unit, and they get there, hey. And there's always nine o'clock at night. I rent it five by ten, but my twenty-four foot U-Haul won't fit in it. <laughs> Jim, what was that thing called? It's called Calcumate. C A L Calcumate. Yeah, Great. Calcumate. Thank you. Uh, let me find. Let me see. It's been, it's been around for a while. Didn't the owner sell it? I, I remember I beta tested it. Like, oh my gosh, six, seven years ago, and I think the owner sold it. And now this guy's really pushing it too. But yeah, these guys, different. they That's got. You know, it, it's it's a little different, but it's got um. And actually, I'm going to drop the website into the chat here. Um. That way, you guys see it. Um, they've they they've got a new. So it's really the same company. One guy left, and the, but they're based in Australia. But they got they they've really realized that there's a lot of opportunity in the U.S. to grow. And it's uh, so I just dropped it into their website. You can go to it and check it out. But if you reach out to anybody, oh, I'm sorry, oh, sorry, I just sent that. Sorry, Willie, I sent that to you and not everybody. Sorry, there you go, guys. There you go. Um, right, I got a question coming in from Robert. Uh, yes. Does anyone send a welcome email or postcard to a new tenant who moves in? Any insight which works? Okay. I'll read I, the question I, again. I lost I, I didn't hear it all. Very no, fine. Does anyone send a welcome email or postcard to a new tenant who moves in? Any insight which works? I can tell you in our world in SiteLink, we set up a CRM for a welcome email to the customer. And we you know, made it all pretty with the HTML letters and all that stuff. So when it goes out, as soon as they move in, it triggers in the event. We send it out to them. It's got all the highlighted bullet points about the property. Uh, we're also using store pass. So it's going to give them the thing to download the pass. Um, but that's one of the biggest things for us. We send it out immediately uh, the day they move in. Um, we've done that and we've done phone calls. As far as postcards, no. No. Um, the one thing I will tell you that when we take over a new store, like we just did last week in Columbus, Georgia, we use the mail service through SiteLink and send out a, uh, when we send our change of ownership letter, we send it out because it verifies through the mail service that addresses. So I can tell you we had 47 bad addresses on a property we just took over. So it gave us a jump start to make sure we got updated addresses for people. Yep. And, and it used to be, and again, I used to do this and I'm kind of probably the same as you. I haven't done it for quite some time of sending off the postcards after they move in. Cause that was the, that was the idea is like, make sure that address is correct before if, and when they get down the line and say you go into lean status and you're trying to send off the letters and things like that. Everything's so electronic now with, with emails and that I, I don't do the postcards uh, anymore. Everything's all <laughs> either text or, or emails that gets blasted out. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, great opportunity to ask for a review as well. Yeah, it is. Uh, with a twist. Um, I've noticed with any time you're asking for reviews, you don't bury it in any other documents or any kind of other communication. It kind of stands on its own. <laughs> it, it stands on its own communication and then people actually pay attention and follow through. Otherwise, it gets lost in the clutter of getting the, the gate codes and welcome emails, all that kind of stuff. So that's at least what I have found anyway. Yeah. See, every, every every week, we always come back to reviews. It's a very important. So every week we do that. All right, what else we got? Any questions coming in? We should, put, we should do it on our website, do it on our hot seat. It's kind of fun. 
So speaking of reviews, and I, I'm going to bring this up again, and I bring it up a lot. I just want to make sure if you guys are sending a link to somebody to do a review for you, please, 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 please make sure it goes to the star rating and not to just to Google page where they got to find they click to find you, click to find you, click to find you. Make sure when they click the link, it pops up with the box that says, "Hey, star rating." But if they don't have it there, they're not going to find it. And actually, you want to go show your screen real quick? I, mean, I just want to show them how easy it is to find that link. I figure you probably already have it up still. I do not, but I can get here in a second. Hold on. Come on. I, I'm sorry. I closed it. All right. Hold on a second here. Thought you were on it today. Must be Friday. You're taking it easy. Oh, well, dude, my my daughter my daughter has knee surgery this morning. Some kind of oh crap. Uh, she's she got working? a little little um uh we're having an arthroscopic procedure today on her. So just you know, she's right now. So right now, okay, Jim, I'm here. Where you at? Just right there. I uh, see what says. Ask for reviews. Bottom right in the blue. Yep. There's your. There's your uh, link. Yep. So they make it easy for you. So there you go. It, it works perfectly. And, and you can do that on your know, email and stuff like that. We actually, in, in our world, we, you know, I don't know if this one's long enough, but we actually use a a, 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 shorten, a shorten code link mm -hmm. that we put it in our site link. So it goes right out to the customers. But yeah, you can do that. But that'll take you right to the link page. It's, good. it's very important. I mean, we're all sending out whether you send an email or text, and we know that texting is the most the favorable way. Um, and we we have it set up in SiteLink that we can hit a button, send it out. It goes right. It brings up the star ratings. Going back to your daughter, she's not at the hospital right now, is she? Yeah, my wife's with her. We'll go. Okay, I won't give you more. First of all, Jim, me sitting in a waiting room would do what? Love and support. No. Just your aura of being there. No I would knows. drive somebody nuts. <laughs> okay. All right. You Jim, you know I don't sit so well. True. That is true. Okay. You could have done this with your laptop, sitting in the hospital bed and doing this. I, I know, but all right. We're good. Okay. I want to make sure. Don't feel obligated. Uh, so hey. Robert, you say you hand out review cards. Um, are you tracking them? Do you know the success rate of the Google card? Do you have a different Q? Is it a QR code or is it just a, so it is a QR code, but can you track that QR code to see how successful that is versus a regular one? I don't know. I think Robert didn't have a camera or a microphone, but. Fine. But yeah, Robert, if you can answer, if you track that, let, let us know because. Yeah, we have QR codes and on everything. So we're trying to track. Uh Mary Joe Willis said, no, he cannot. Uh, one thing I would do if you're going to do that, I would make sure that you put a uh, a tracking link on that QR code. That way you can find out how many people are, are using that link. We have one on our on our um uh, on our gate signs for pay now, right now. We actually can track them all. So if you're using a, a bit.ly link or a tracking link on your QR code, that way you can track what you're doing. Since you brought it up, I'm curious because to me, I'm I'm just sort of mindset of it's it's text is number one through ten priority when it comes to asking for those reviews. Are you getting people to actually click from uh, the the sign? We don't have we don't have we have our pay links on our sign and our rent sign. We don't have them. Oh, okay. and I t t told you we're using That's we're relying heavily on uh, storage reach for our reviews. Yeah. yeah. Dude, last month ninety seven reviews on th on two hundred ninety eight rentals. I mean, we're since we signed up with him, we're well over. I'm gonna look. I just go. I got a peek right now since I said it. Um, wrong one. Wrong page. And then we gotta start getting the cut of this. We keep bringing up storage reach every single week. It just comes up organically, dude. You need a piece of this. <laughs> he owes us something. So I, right now, in the last seven days, I've had 21 reviews. Yep. I mean, I'll cross your portfolio, obviously, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. But it's it's crazy how things are, you know, but yeah. reviews, I mean, and, and it's funny, I, I did a consultant, and here, going back to the websites and all these things, 
when you're looking at your website and you're importing your reviews onto your website through your, your website partners, please make sure the reviews that they're displaying are recent and not three years ago. <laughs> it's it's not funny because it happens two times in a row, two different that. companies, same website company was displaying old reviews, like from like 19, 20, and 21. Mm -hmm. Please say there were at least fives. Threes, fours, and five, but Shannon, it doesn't matter. If they're I not know, if they're not recent, they don't count. At least it wasn't a one, Jim. <laughs> a one star review from 2019. Let's put well, that I don't think right anybody's gonna be displaying on their website their ones. I mean, you know, you guys all know you can you can start, you know, three and fours. You don't say show anything lower than that, right? Google they're gonna find it, but not on your website. Yeah, let's let's go back to that elite one. We'll we'll see if they have it on their website. Let's go ahead, pull back 2016. up 2016. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was 2019 for their best of whatever. I know. So we, we bashed them enough. That's true. All right. What else we got? We got about 10 more. I will be mindful of everyone's time. So we got 10 minutes left. So whatever questions you got. Any questions come up during while you gave your presentation with uh with Damon? You guys do like Yeah. I mean, we, we were talking about, <laughs> and again, and, and I know Shannon's going to love this, but call centers came up big time. You know, hey, I don't have one. Is it really worth it? I'm like, yes. Just answer the phone. Listen, I, I am not ever going to tell you you have to have a call center. I'm just going to have to tell you you have to answer 100% of your calls. And but you, Shannon, you, you you're do. not there 24-7 to answer the phone. I Like I said, I don't know what you need in order to answer your phone 24-7. Just answer the phone. Call yeah. me if you need help. That's it. <laughs> yeah, the other big one that came up, Jim, we talked about is admin fees. You know, because we were look, we were sharing some statistics. Because with revenue right now being where it's at and prices coming down, you can have you can affect that. I, I mean, know. we were talking about um, admin fees, and I we were asking the room. Some people don't charge them. Some people are five or ten dollars. We yeah. upped our admin fee January twenty January first to twenty nine dollars, and we didn't see a single blip. Yeah. All the big boys are at twenty five, twenty nine, thirty two, whatever. That one and the other big thing that came up in the conversation was we talked about how we charge a phone payment fee if you have to call in and talk to our manager because we want to retrain the customers to pay. Their now, we also preface it that you have to make sure you have the other avenues set up and ready to go, like the call center, the IVR, paying online, paying the text, all these things to do that. But we're still pushing that, you know, if you have to pay my manager person, because think about it. If your manager spends all day on the first answering phone calls, taking payments, they can't get done what they really need to do, which is rent more units. Yeah. A question for you when it comes to that admin, because I get this question quite a bit as well. Uh, a first, this kind of goes back to knowing your market <coughs> and knowing what your competitors are doing, frankly, and secret shopping all your competition, because then that, that kind of justifies, oh, I can't be charging this much money. So as soon as I kind of give that direction to my owners and clients of just knowing what your market is actually charging, then they feel a lot better of, oh, I can charge 20, 25 bucks or even more some, in some cases. And they feel justified with that. But my question is when it comes to uh, move-ins, we're all trying to push insurance uh, penetration. I'm just curious, are you, do you guys include like maybe the first month of insurance within the admin fee or is that totally separate? So we, we charge the admin fee, we charge the lock, we charge everything's up front. So we pay for that. And the way we explain it, if people ask about the admin fee, hey, Jim, you know, we have to get you, you're renting a new unit with, we have to get you set up in all of our systems. So you can be able to access online to pay your bill. You'll be able to access, you'll be able to access your gate, you'll be able to get your text messaging set up for you. We have to, we have to set you up in our systems. We got to generate a lease. We got to get that signed. We got to do all these things that covers the admin fee. Yep. We have people say, well, I get the lock free. No, we, so I can tell you, Art, we have a $29 admin fee. We're paying, we're charging $15.99 for a disc lock and we're doing the protection plans. And we're starting, we try to recommend a $3,500 plan for $17 a month. Yeah. That, that, you start there, then you can go back if you need to. Yep, that's exactly, but we have, I mean, and it was brought up, uh, Damon said yesterday, well, you know, in, in my world, because our leases should say you have to protect yourself. So option A is you take the protection plan. Option B is you provide, a, you provide a declaration page. In my world, there is no option C. If you don't want to do one or the other, you're not going to rent with me. 
And Damien says, well, you don't want to lose your rental. I said, no, I do, because inevitably the customer who's going to squawk there is going to be a headache down the road somewhere. Yep. And then why treat one customer differently than everybody else? So if Trisha doesn't want to you know, give me a declaration page because her stuff's not worth it, sorry, Trisha, I'm not going to rent from you because I'm not going to treat you any differently than Ryan or Steve or Max or Willie Joe or Shannon. Everybody's the same. Provide it or take it, one or the other. Trisha, this you got to do that in five star, don't you? You're a mute, Trish. Uh, we did. We switched over to Storage Shield, and now it's not advertised, but it is in our back pocket. If they absolutely refuse, they can sign a, um, the re the release to not take it. Tell Ben to strap on his big boy pants and do it the right way. <laughs> I'll GM that. All right, hold on. So I'm sure. <laughs> gonna... She <laughs> will, too. She'll throw me under the bus. <laughs> I got a question here from, uh, if I can read, Elizabeth. Uh, since we are on the topic of fees, how are you handling credit card processing fees? We don't. Are you passing them along to your customer? No. No. Nah, we we do not. Guys. <laughs> yeah. so, no. We have toyed with the fact of implementing a technology fee across the board to everybody. Uh, we haven't pulled, pulled the trigger on that one yet. We're thinking about it. Um, but as far as that, no, we do not do that. I mean, we we do we. Well, I would rather have a customer sign up with a debit card than a credit card any day of the week because a debit card is a cheaper processing fee for us. You're all aware of that, right? Okay. But no, that I would not do that. Mary Jo's eighty nine percent insurance, very very nice. And, and we'll go back to what those credit card uh, processing fees. I guarantee if you flat out said, oh, there's a surcharge for that, you're just pissing them off. <laughs> and then you're going to deal with reviews and just, no. Well, then they're going to want to bring you cash and you're not taking cash and then they want to check. I can tell you, uh, we don't even take ACH. Even though it's cheaper, I will not take ACH because it's more of a headache. Why is it a headache? Because we, it, it, when, when, when they bounce and they do bounce, it's a pain in the butt. And you don't find out about it until two weeks later. Well, you got to find out. So I would, so look, if, if you're going to write, if you're going to do an ACH, Jim, you got a debit card. Yeah. You have 20 seconds for a horror story on that, Jim, just to give you a, a an illustration. Yeah, sure. One of our clients had someone do an ACH with them, called the following day and said, I am so sorry. I used the wrong card. And it took money out of my account, and I I need to give you this other card instead. So they re they they reversed the transaction and refunded the money, but the bounce transaction didn't happen until like a week later. So she was out that money not once but twice because she had already refunded it prior to finding out that it wasn't even going to go through. So they went to a no ACH policy based on that as well. But gotcha. Those are people. They, they, they find some way to screw you over. <laughs> people really well, want. Yeah, the ones who are going to be crooked are going to, are going to try every which way they can. Um, and we just had one with. I had a question about auctions when I was there with, uh, at uh, NASA because we don't we do not take as, when people are buying an auction unit. We don't take a deposit from them because you know a hundred buck deposit really doesn't do a lot. We actually shifted our philosophy that when people rent or buy a unit. They have to give us a copy of their ID when they pay their bill. And we tell them straight up that if you don't clean out the unit, you're going straight to a national collection agency for a clean out fee. Don't worry about it. Because think about it. If they give you a 50 or or $100 de cleaning deposit and they leave drunk, does that $100 cover it anyway? No. Just curious. Just that. Kind of along the same lines for your for your collections. Do you also send your uh, difference of the balance after it goes yep. to an auction collection? Yeah, good. Well, we we use it again. It's it's something we have because we use it at we if we tell you we're going to do it, Jim. If you don't pay your bill, we're going to send you collections. Or we have skip outs or leave trash behind. Like in, in our world, if you if you leave trash behind, it's fifty dollars per item. You know, we've had people drop right. something out of a unit around the corner. We'll charge you 50 bucks per item. We'll send you right to a national collection agency. 
And I, I, I swear to God, I had a guy call me. I got a call from the company in December. Customer was complaining. I call, we called the customer. And the guy goes, well, I didn't think you were actually going to do it. I said, we told you we were. Yeah, but I didn't think you meant it. He goes, well, how can we get it off? I said, easy. Pay, pay what you owe us. And now, again, most of that money is going to go back to them. I don't care. But if I tell you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And we got one we work with that that works in every state in the, in the union. So whether you're in Texas, you know, you know, we have Texas, North Carolina, Ohio. Now we got Alabama and Georgia. By the way, Max, I got my store in Georgia back. Um, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Ohio, Kansas. I don't care. We have one company. That's great. Hey, uh, procedural? Quick procedural question. Uh, it just kind of semi relates to both Shannon and Jim's question. If you have a if you have a tenant that's late, let's say four months, and they're in the auction process and they try and do a credit card payment for let's say one month or a partial payment, how do you procedurally do that? Do you refund them the partial payment so the clock doesn't start over and say either you're going to pay the full amount, let's say four months plus late fees? How do you do that so that you don't take a small portion payment and then the clock, I assume the clock restarts from, let's say, a legal aspect? If you if you do accept a partial payment, um, well, how why would you work? accept it? How would, they, how would you, uh, is it a technology one or paying online? Because in my world, you can set your website up so they can only take a full payment. Okay. And we also do not allow a credit card payment online after day 60, 68. So when you get up closer to the auction, they can't even pay online. So you ah, can't pay online okay. after a certain date, and you have to make a full payment online. So we don't, uh, Ryan, not to be sound, we don't have that problem because we don't allow partial payments. Got it. So it's a structural back end issue that you can fix to to do that. Got it. Yep. Okay. I just uh, I don't have a facility yet, but it was a question that came up, and I just didn't know how to solve that. So there is a solution. Great. Thanks, Jim. All right, I want to be mindful of everyone's time here and ask for a favor, uh, if you don't mind. I put it in chat. I think it's about three up now with the chat now. See my email, jim at storage.com. If you don't mind, take two minutes. If you guys are getting value out of this, if you're enjoying coming here and being a part of this community, give me a quick little testimonial kind of thing. I want to kind of put that together on the page and do some uh, blast out, see if we can get some more people to jump on this as well. I, mean, I love our community, but hey, we gotta get some get some other people in here as well and get more value. So if you don't mind, take two minutes. If you have a something nice to say and a little uh, testimonial, I would appreciate that. So before we close, check that out. Copy and paste the email and go from there. Any also, uh, when you get the email or the alert on Facebook, whatever, share it on Facebook. Share it, you know, forward to an e uh, uh, a colleague. Hell, forward to to a competitor. Say, hey, you might want to hop on here and learn something. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's we're, we're almost. It, I have a whole. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll talk about this next time. But I'm, I'm kind of doing a little bit about that here in Utah with uh, some storage locations. Kind of putting together a little. You know, hey, we're all in this together. We want to be all competitors and kind of doing some best practices, kind of a thing. So, yeah. Well, let you pick we're up doing a, a PA SSA. We're doing a PA SSA event in the Pittsburgh game this year. We don't have a whole lot from the western part of Pennsylvania. So I contacted one of my one of my vendors, Bob from Open Tech. He's going to supply me a list of all the people in the Pittsburgh uh, Erie market that we're going to hit up to try to invite them to the baseball game to join the PASSA to keep this keep everything growing. Because we, the more people we tell them that all the time, uh, eventually something's going to happen. There's going to be a lawsuit somewhere online because somebody's not doing something right. And it's because they're not part of an association or a group or a network. And it's going to make it worse for everybody. So the more we can educate everybody out there about the ins and outs of how to do things the correct way, legally, it's better for everybody. Back to Bidas. Call me later this afternoon, Jim. Uh, I, I got an idea for outreach to help you cool. with that. So uh, that's right the alley. I got an idea for you. All right. All anyway, right. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll do this again in two weeks. Take care. See ya.